there's going to be a, you know, there's going to be some movement between now and the SEC tournament, um, with three games left. Um, you know, Kentucky wins, they uh, they're, they're they're champions, and so you know, be in their shoes and you know know that they've won seven straight since they left us. Won some close games. They're playing really well right now, and you know all they are is oh, is a one home win against an Auburn team that they're t that they're forty eight and two against at home to win the league. It's, it's pretty good math right there, right? Um, so obviously they're they're very much in the driver's seat. Um, and they've earned it. Um, I think Kentucky's been an undervalued team all year. Um, yeah, I felt like I said it last night on my radio show, I felt like last year if they had beaten us to the Final Four, they'd have beaten Virginia, they'd have beaten Texas Tech. Um, um, we were as good as anybody at the Final Four last year. We absolutely were. But they were probably a little better than us. And. Uh, and this year, you know, I think they're the best team in our league. They've got three dynamic guards that, you know, two McDonald's All-Americans, and uh, that are both playing great and improving. And uh, and Ashton Hagens, uh, who's one of the best defensive players in the country. By the way, I thought that uh, when the Naismith um, Awards kind of came out and had talked a little bit about the uh, um, the. Uh, Best defensive players in the, in the in the country. I I didn't see Herb Herb uh, Herb Jones's name on that list, and I didn't see Isaac Okoro or Samir Dowdy. And I thought all three of those guys out of our league could have been in there. Um, and then Richards is a, is a dominating inside player. Um, who Austin Wiley and Anthony McElmore did an incredible job against the first time, and for us to have a chance to win, we're going to have to do it again. I'm sure he knows that. I'm sure Coach Calipari is challenging him on, the, on those fronts. EJ Montgomery's uh, playing really well here, down the stretch, and improved, and you know, obviously, he's a, a lot of people, you know, talking about him too. Is so, you know, well, he's one of the McDonald's All Americans. They've got four, um, and uh, so Kentucky's playing really well. And, you know, for us, um, I thought we played great when we played them the first time. I thought we played really hard. I thought we played. One of our most physical games. You have to be physical against Kentucky because they're so physical offensively. I mean, the way they run their offense, and the way they screen, and the way they move, uh, they'll hit you. And uh, you know, a lot of teams can wilt under that. Underneath that, um, our biggest struggles have been on the offensive end, making shots. Um, Kentucky holds teams down at 38 percent or so. Field goal percentage defense is one of the best in the league. They lead the league and block shots. So you know, we try to get to the rim. They do a great job of trying not to foul and blocking shots. So that'll be a, a challenge for us. We, we have to make shots up there to pull, pull off this upset. Um, and our kids are, I'm very happy for our players that they've worked so hard this year to actually still be in this race. Um, and uh, you know, have a chance to finish in the top four and still have a chance to win the league. Here we are with three games left. In the first game, how big a factor was the rebounding for you guys and winning that? Well, it was a huge factor. I mean, part of the reason why we've been a good offensive rebounding team is we missed so many shots. Um, we do have offensive rebounding principles and guys are responsible to be on the backside. Um, Kentucky did a lot of switching in our game and they had some guards down there on some of our bigs, and that helped us rebound a little bit. Um, but it was big; it was huge. Second chance points, and then um, you know, Kentucky rebounds about thirty-three percent of their misses, and I thought we did a pretty good job having to keep them off. Richards had a couple of big-time offensive rebounds. He's got to go hard to the glass; you got to hit him every time. So they got real size, real length, and they're hard to score at the rim. How has Isaac Okoro been in the days since Tuesday night? Um, Isaac's been good. Um, 
he uh, he bounced back you know, really well um, from you know, from his from his uh, his hamstring, and uh, you know responded really well. We had a contact practice yesterday, and he went through it uh, with no, without any problems. So um, you know it's probably going to take him a little bit of time to get all of his explosiveness back um, and his complete trust, but. Responded well. Quickly, he looks like he's playing about as well as anybody in the league right now. Yeah. I'd say, you know, they've won seven since they left here. They were playing well coming in, but they're playing even better now. I mean, they're playing their best basketball of the season right now. Um, Quickly's part of the reason. Uh, he is lighting it up from three. Um, I think what makes them so good is one of the things that makes us effective is, you know, with Javon Samir and Isaac on the floor together, everybody's got a couple of good defensive guards, but not everybody has three really good defensive guards. And that's what you have to have against Kentucky. <laughs> you have to, your guards have to be able to find a way to keep those guys in front, get through screens, challenge shots. Um, and uh, they do a, it's, it's always been a, a really good system for guards to get guys open, get guys shots, get guys screens, and uh, it's hard to cover. How's Okoro just getting off the floor and getting back to that rebounding? We're kind of accustomed to seeing, you know, try to get some more confidence in that hamstring, I guess. Yeah, I, I, was, I was teasing him at practice uh, yesterday a little bit. I said, I guess, I guess there's got to be a direct correlation between hamstring injuries and rebounding because he didn't have one against Ole Miss. He also played 27 minutes in his first outing back. I didn't mean to play him that much, but the game was close, and we needed him out there defensively. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, he, he won't be holding anything back at all against Kentucky. He can't. He just can't. And he's a, he, he, he'll be a, he's got to be a factor for us um, because of his, you know, he is Isaac, is a mismatch, and if if we can use him as a mismatch, then we you know it really can be effective. Um, that said, I get that ball into him sometimes, but they've got a couple of big boys in there, you know, EJ and Nick that'll just beat that thing back with, with real size and length. And Isaac doesn't like to get a shot blocked. You talk a lot about trying to make history with your team. Two and forty-eight. This is a chance to do it, right? Well, I mean, I look at it this way. Um, I haven't shared this yet with the team. I've shared a lot of things with them about this, about this weekend, about this the end of the season. Um, you know, last year we wanted to make history, and uh, talked about there's no better way of making history than go through the, the toughest schedule, you know, ever in the road to the Final Four in New Mexico State, and then Kansas and North Carolina and Kentucky, which is what it was. Um, if we're going, if we're going to get there, let's get there in a very, very unique, historically way, and we did. You know, right now, I mean, Kentucky is absolutely the driver's seat. They're one home win against Auburn away from being conference champions. And they're 48 and two in the last 50 times playing us there. And it's a monumental task to try to beat them there and everything, but, you know, so it's gonna take special and uh, it'll be historic. Anything else?